The only moment that matters is now. In my Audi feeling different. 2016, new to me, that's how I'm living. Thoughts got my top changing off in Scotty Pippen. No fucks given. Wake up, bro, I'm living. Yo, I'm flustered by existence. Anybody listening? Are we free? Are we trapped? Is there something that I'm missing? Damn, give me a sign. One of a kind, starting to think of the vine. Sign him a copy, but what can I say? I'm a guy, is part of my life. Drop a few bars just to start to show up. Spitting mentos in the coat, no cat. Watch me blow up. Oh, Steve. Okay, Steve. Damn, bro. I didn't see that coming from a breeze. Huh? That's wind, bro. That's gas. That's air. That's now. That's oxygen. I'm spitting heat. Florida bars. Get it? What's happening? What's good? Is this a dunk tutorial? Where am I? What the fudge is happening right now? Where am I? For, for real. Woo! We're here with podcast. I get to talk about what I want first because this is my show. This is what I want to do. You can skip ahead to the tutorial, but you're going to be out of the loop. I didn't mean to rhyme there, but you're out of the loop. When I'm famous, you won't get any of my jokes, bro. I say it like so certainly, but here's the thing. I love entertaining. It's what I am. It's who I breathe. Huh? That's who I am. And you need an audience. I, need, I have to be famous to be an entertainer. It's like, you're, what are you, a trainer and you have no clients, right? You're a business. You have no sales. You, if, you're, if you don't have no sales, you're not a business. If you're a teacher, you got no students. What, what are you? You're a teacher and no students. You just know shit. You just know shit. So how, how you're not teaching it though. So you're not a teacher. If you know shit with no students and you're not teaching it, you're not a teacher. Hence, furthermore, in addition to and as well as, I'm an entertainer. I'm famous. Okay. Mentos in a Coke. I'm going to blow up. Okay. Put them in. That's, I spit that. I'm going to blow up. Take the cap off. No cap. What the kids are saying these days. What's good. Welcome to the show. Um, we're going to get right into it. Why I suck off the fucking dribble. You'll understand by the end of this, it'll be a lot of energy. It'll be like a whirlwind, but we're going to get through it. I'm going to try to stay coherent. I have some good points, but you'll definitely get some valuable information. If you're listening, it's a lot of tips you'll, you'll see from the video, but I'll describe it. And you'll definitely get a lot of value out of this. What I want to talk about is first, I watched that show yesterday. I think you should leave on Netflix by Tim Robinson. I believe hilarious sketch comedy absurd just like takes things to the extreme you got to be in the right mood for it. you got to watch it with your boys it's a lot better when you watch it with people that like the same stuff it's so funny um hilarious and i actually this is what i like about the podcast i like to share other entertainment that i like i wa- i learned about it from uh the your mom's house podcast with tom segura and his and christina pajitsky and they had anthony jesselnik on who is a comedian that i love as well and what I loved about, he mentioned the show, but what I love about Anthony is that he was explaining his stand-up routine, how he wants to make it the best it could possibly be, and he wants to be one of the greatest. And I love learning about people trying to master their craft and how much goes into it. And that's just what I love about podcasting and what I love about the entertainment things. And just what I love about life is people going hard. I'm all about maxing out everything. So that was a perfect example of where I learned about a comedian. I love his comedy already. I think it's incredible. And then to hear his work ethic and how hard he's pushing himself is inspiring. And then I learned about this great show and watched that show. It was so funny. And so I I also uh, tell you to watch. I also recommend it. So go watch that. It was great. I love comedy a lot. Okay. So now, um, so now I'm famous. And here goes a tutorial on why I suck off the dribble uh, versus the lob. And let's just get into it. I got to let my uh, video program load up. So I got to kill time. I got to kill time. Hopefully we make this efficient. I do think this is very valuable and I do think um, you will learn a lot. So here we shall go. Here it is. Okay. So there's factors in jumping that I'm good at doing off the lob that I'm not good at doing off the dribble. And first things first, you're most likely, most, unless you're a crazy freak, the majority of people are going to jump a little bit lower off the dribble than off a lob. Just because you have a ball in your hand, it's just weight in your hand, and you don't have as much arm swing, it just makes sense physically. Um, Me, I'm very drastic. I have a very big drop off from my dribble dunk, so I'm trying to raise it up, and it's actually getting a lot better, but I'm going to get through all the things I'm doing wrong and all the things I'm doing right, and I think by the end of it, you'll see why there's such a big disparity. So here's a first, a dribble dunk. 10 feet, 
pretty easily. And what I want to point out here is that it was kind of in the warm ups. It's a 10 foot rim. I dunked it pretty easily. And my form and footwork and technique is really good. It breaks down when I try to add speed because, and that's the style of jumper I am. I'm very fast. I jump with a lot of speed and I come into it like a bat out of hell. So if you look here off a of self bounce, I even get the two hands, which is my worst dribble dunk, which I'll get into. Um, the thing is with the slow approach like that, I plant correctly. I go straight up and I can, I have a lot of bounce now or a good amount. So like going slow and going into the approach like that, I do it correctly. Now, this is why I'm good at um, off the lob. Here we go into it. So that was good form. You can see I'm jumping very easily and I get up with good form. I didn't dribble dunk the second one, but it just points out I can do two hands with low effort and I'll get into why I can't off speed. So now, beautiful backboard dunk. Yeah. Oh, let's go. Okay. So now if you look here. Okay. So what happens here? is I come into it really fast. My penultimate is really big, and now the backboard dunk is a great indicator of what all the things I do right are in a lob dunk. So with the backboard, I'm coming into it with a lot of speed, right? The ball is already up on the glass, and I have to go get it, so it's keeping my eyes high, keeping my torso up, and then that's really good positioning. That's how you want to position your body. Then the ball is coming off the rim and I have to go get it quick. So it makes me plant my penultimate and my takeoff. It makes me load and explode, load and explode super quick and go get the ball. And then because the ball is coming behind me as I'll get on to, into in my other lobs, it makes me open up really fast. OK, so that makes me go straight up with it and then I am it. Okay, so I use that speed correctly, I plant quickly, I go upright, and that's because I have the cue of the ball coming off the backboard, okay? So, this was actually one of my best sessions ever, probably my number one session, meaning with off the dribble and my technique, and it was pretty recently. It was on 10 feet, and here's two dribble dunks I'm going to show you side by side, and uh, by the end of it, you'll see the difference. So, in this session, I actually had some of my best dribble attempts and dribble dunks ever on 10 feet, so here's one. Okay, the good one, the good points here, super aggressive. I came in really fast. I took off fast and I attacked the rim. Now that I did some negatives, but here I'll show you an even better one here. Okay, so now you might be able to see the difference just from those first clips, but the difference are is that I'll show you side by side right now is that the second one, the one I just showed you, I came in fast and I was able to pop a little better. If you notice, I went a little more straight up. Both were really aggressive. Both were back rim misses, but one was a little bit different and one was a way better form. So here's the side by side and I'll explain. Okay. So I take off. You can already see in the one that's bad on the left that my foot is turning outwards, which is an indicator that I kind of passed, passed my plant. Like I, pl I put my foot down. I don't know if it's the block foot or not. I don't want to use that term incorrectly. But my first foot, the plant foot, is already past it. Now look, because of that and because I'm not, I'm not trying to go up with it, my torso in the left one is a little bit leaning and my one in the right one is, is in line. Like my head from my spine all the way down looks almost completely straight, which is what you want because you're maximizing your vertical. You're trying to go upwards with it. So in the, in the good one, it looks like I used my momentum correctly and went up with the dunk. Now they both look about the same height at the peak, but the difference is maybe a fraction of an inch to an inch. It's hard to tell from this video, but even if it's a half an inch, and that's one factor that I took off straight instead of forwards. That's a half an inch. So other factors like speed with the ball in my hand, that's going to be another half an inch. The point is it, it adds up to a lot of inches, okay? So what I want to focus on right here is that another thing about these dribble dunks is that what I did right with the, with the good one is that I opened up and went up with it, right? And I also had the right amount of speed coming into it. The first one might have been too fast even, you know? And the other one, the other thing is that when I'm coming into the plant, it's being able to plant from the right positioning from the rim, which I do really well off the, off, off a lob as I take off from the right point. Now, one thing, one way I learned about this, um, let me show you more about the cues. So let me show you some fucking yams real quick. Um, right here. Okay. There's one Jesus Christ. Jesus fucking Christ. And... Jesus, St. Mary, and Josephine. Okay, I dunk those hard as hell. It's a baby rim, but let me just show you this one because it's one of my favorite dunks of all time. Watch how fast I come into it. Now we're getting into the positives of what I do, and I'll, I'll combine them both in the end, the positives and the negatives of why the disparity. This is what I do really well off a lob. 
I come in faster than a lightning bolt that comes straight from a rocket ship that Elon Musk put into orbit yesteryear, okay? One more time. Super fast. Now look at the footwork. My penultimate is the size of the, of a, the equator. It literally wraps around the whole world. It's so long. I plant and I plant my feet so quick, they're straight and solid, and I'm already going up. Look how, look how upright I am before I take off. I'm, I'm just almost the completely anthem right vertical, there. okay? Now, the reason for that is because the ball is intro, behind me, an so I don't even have time to go forwards. I have to stop and go get it, and I also have to reach behind me, which makes me open up. That's why the lob is so good for me. I can use my speed. I use a crazy amount of arm swing, and I go for that ball, and I absolutely fucking yam it. Let's go. Okay, so that's all the things I do right. Now, when the, that cue is really important to know so that when I go off the dribble, I have to think to open up. That's a really big part for me. Even on the Vertec at Dunk Camp, I, I didn't jump my best. I, when I was looking afterwards, I kept passing my plant. Even though I was looking at the thing, I wasn't staying tall enough because I was looking at the Vertec, and even though I was looking up and focusing on looking up, I was still looking a little bit forwards up that when the ball's behind me I'm, I'm like opening up so i have to think look up but also like go up with it because i was like reaching for the vertex you know so all those little things add up to lower and lower jumps so now here's here's a good example of when i was actually here's a cue that told me to go crazy off the dribble this is one at the time this is my best dribble dribble dunk of all time and not even because it was over a defender that's six seven it was be, it was literally my best attempt best completed dribble dunk because of the cue before this i never tried to really dunk on somebody but just take a look and then i'll explain he is six seven and i dunked over him yep i know no body but jesus christ he literally went for it he's got no hops oh my god he has no bounce, but still, he really went for it. He really thought he could block me, and I went over him. Like, I went, he reached for it, and my hand went, it was crazy, okay? So now, what did I do right? So because he was coming at me, I got a cue that I normally get off the lob, or similar cues that make me stay upright. He's coming at me. I have to plant quickly. I have to get up, right? I'm thinking about going over. I'm like, oh, I'm kind of like almost like reaching so he can't reach my ball, right? So if you look... I plant and I go immediately like this. And I, you, I do do that in the other ones, but my mindset is going at the rim forwards. But with the ball in my hand trying to go over, I'm like, oh, I'm trying to go up as high as I can. And I had the right cue. So I take off really well. And that's it. And that's something I have to think about and something I can learn from a defender coming at me. I plant quicker because he's coming at me. I don't have time to like just think and load up because when I'm when there's no defender, all I'm thinking is, take off and try to attack the rim but i really have to think about jumping and going up so that was a big mental thing i didn't know it it wasn't just like a one-time thing and i learned it i had to over time realize the difference and so on top of that because i was doing it improperly i was building bad patterns into my dribble dunks that's why it took so long to overcome it because not only did i not know it but i was also repeating bad behavior patterns off the dribble okay so now the windmill another thing i learned from the windmill dunk Windmill off the dribble 10 feet, let's go. What I learned is that I'm super aggressive with it. So when I go for a windmill and I'm taking off at the rim, I jump really aggressive. And I never really think about that, but since I love windmills and since I'm doing it good off the lob, I felt an aggressive jump. And I'm like, oh, I'm going more aggressive attacking it just mentally because I want it. But when I'm going for like a two-hand drunk, I don't have that same aggression because I'm just trying to reach. I don't have that same aggression that I want to punch it. So it's just that mentality came into my head from learning how to dri dribble windmills or attempting dribble windmills. I'm like, oh, I'm jumping more aggressive. I can jump more aggressive off the dribble. And then what's next? Here's just another dribble attempt. And even though I made it, it wasn't the best, but you can see I can make it pretty good form. Maybe not the most up, but I was able to make it. I dunk it pretty well, a little bit of extension, pretty good. And now what I learned recently, this was just last week. I didn't really learn anything, but this is all of it coming together and you can see progress. Okay, baby rim 99, but the point is I went through it. I'm not even using that much speed. So I had to slow it down because I need to focus on my footwork first but my foot's not the best, but I did go pretty much straight up, right? I got some good pop. Usually I don't even get my, get, get through my, mo mo my motion. I usually lose like through my weird plant. I kind of lose some of my juice and I went up with it. Felt like a good pop, felt like a good explosion. My arm swing, the tomahawk helps with my arm swing and I dunked it correctly. When I watch my other attempts, if you go back to that session, some of them I even talk about, I jump forwards because I'm attacking the rim, but I really need to jump up first. So you can see it coming together here. I'm going super slow. And now going forward, what I'm going to do is practice 
uh, slowly. So what I did this day is just do a basic two hand dribble dunk where I just kind of walk up, get my form good, feel that pop. Cause I want to ingrain that in my brain to feel that pop at the final parts of my approach. And then I'll start adding steps and start adding speed. So that way I can build up a full approach with correct patterns. And that's the difference. And let's watch this, these yams one more time. Okay. I just want to watch this one more time. Ready? One. God damn it. Two. Sweet mother of pearl. And three. Yabba dabba do. Okay. So that is the end of the tutorial. I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, please leave them below. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is that um, yesterday I talked about the center of mass. When you have the ball in your hand, you don't get to use that center of mass trick. You don't get to do that. So with two hands, it was very. it's very difficult for me to get that pump. That's why the windmill also helps me too to dunk it off the dribble because I'm getting that little pump. You could check yesterday's video for what I'm talking about. But all those factors in conclusion, the factors of the speed I come in with without the ball in my hands, I can run full speed. The ball in my hands weighs me down literally. I don't get the arm swing. I don't get the center of mass rotation of like a windmill or one handed. I don't get to lean with one hand. Um, what else is there? And I just take off correctly and fast because of the cue of the ball. So all those factors play into my, my dribble dunks being poor. And then on top of it, the mental patterns and, and being not as aggressive and also uh, teaching myself wrong things like taking off too close, taking off uh, forwards instead of up, all those different things. I, I ingrained bad patterns that I had to unlearn first and learn about first. I had to even understand them before I could unlearn them. So it took a long time, but it's a lot of progress. And that's actually feels therapeutic. I feel like I got that off my chest and now you guys can understand why I suck off the dribble, but it's getting better. And I'm going to dunk on your frigging mother if I have to. God damn it. All right. So now on this day in history, I'm going to wrap this up. Thank you guys for listening. Thanks for everything. There's nothing that good today. I already looked it over, but I wanted to say this. 1971, Bobby Orr signs a five-year contract with the Boston Bruins. Hell yeah. First million-dollar contract. We making money. I'm famous. I'm going to make the first, I'm going to make the first million dollars as a dunk, as a dunk lifer. What does that mean? Dunk lifer of the day from the last podcast. Bro, you got so much weirder on your channel. Oh my God, says Dylan Shepard. Bro, you got so much weirder. Listen, it's not about becoming weirder. It's about chipping away the veil of normalcy, okay? This is who I am. This is the real me. So if you're staying in tune with my podcast, this is me, bro. If you want to see the vlog, that's all business, baby. We're on the court. By the way, I'm dunking today. I'm going to stay off for laying off the hamstring. That's it. Be your full self. Chip away like Michelangelo's marble fucking thing, whatever it's called. You know that analogy. Look it up. I didn't make it up. He saw the marble and he chipped away everything that wasn't David, the, the statue. That's what I'm doing. I'm chipping away. Enjoy your day. Keep the rhymes coming and I'll keep them coming all day. God damn it. What else can I say besides? Toodaloo. Thoughts got my top changing off in Scotty Pippen. No fucks given. Wake up, bro. I'm living. Yo, I'm flustered by existence. Anybody listening? Are we free? Are we trapped? Is there something that I'm missing? Damn, give me a sign.